the issue of global warming, kind of like the issue of Darwinian evolution, seems to generate a lot of controversy in the public discourse. Not because it's actually scientifically controversial, but because many types of people, paranoid schizophrenics, Republicans, conspiracy theorists, fundamentalist Christians, and other groups of scientifically illiterate buffoons seem to have a lot of trouble understanding basic scientific concepts. I personally think that a lot of the controversy is simply a matter of ignorance. Ignorance coupled with the fact that it seems like a significant portion of the American population uh, has a kind of innate suspicion of the scientific community. And this can be seen with Darwinian evolution. In America, over 40% of the population doesn't accept evolution as a fact, even though in the scientific community it's been a well-established theory for over a century. This simply doesn't happen in other countries, whether it be Japan, China, the Netherlands, the UK, France. They don't have this disparity between uh, scientific consensus and public consensus. So I'm not sure what it is about America. It probably has something to do with politics and religion, but that's not what this video is going to be about. Also, I would say that many people in America don't understand science. They think science is uh, intimidating and daunting, and a lot of it is, especially things like biology and quantum physics. On the other hand, there are a lot of scientific theories uh, that at their core have pretty simple mechanisms and are pretty easy to understand for even the scientifically illiterate. It is possible to understand the basic concept of a theory without having to have scientific expertise and to understand all the little nuances. So that's what I'm going to do with this video, try to explain global warming. So I'm going to try to make this explanation as simple as possible. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. For the first few hundred something million years of the Earth's existence, it was essentially just a great big giant ball of spinning, scorchingly hot shit. Just try to picture whatever you imagine hell to be like. And that's what the early Earth was like. Hell, a lot of lava, a lot of rock, and extremely hot. And it was made extra hot because of the presence of greenhouse gases, more specifically methane and carbon dioxide. These are called greenhouse gases for a simple reason. The Earth is like a greenhouse, or rather greenhouse is modeled after the Earth. The Earth has an atmosphere which is essentially like a protective bubble. This keeps in certain gases which allow for the Earth to stay warm. The atmosphere, the ozone layer, not only keeps in the good stuff, but keeps out the bad stuff like UV rays. But in the early stages of the Earth, it was simply too hot for any life to form, which is why there wasn't any life. Poisonous gases, uh, carbon dioxide, and methane are poisonous uh, in large amounts to all forms of life. There has to be a perfect balance of these gases in the atmosphere to life uh, to continue surviving as it is. If there's too little carbon and methane and too much oxygen, it'll get too cold. If there's too much carbon and too much methane, it'll get way too hot. So eventually the Earth cooled. Um, the Earth's crusts and minerals and stones uh, began to trap in some of the carbon dioxide and the methane. This allowed the Earth to cool significantly, and when it began to cool, life began to develop on Earth. I'm going to skip over that part because I don't have a time machine and I'm not God. But eventually, at some point, life developed on Earth, starting with microorganisms and eventually evolving into plants. Uh, these early forms of life thrived mostly by absorbing carbon in the atmosphere. That's what plants do. They breathe in carbon and breathe out oxygen. So the Earth was went from being hell-like, uh, all mountains and volcanoes and lava, to uh, millions of years later being covered in plants, and that's all it was. And uh, 
because it was all plants, this allowed for the absorption of carbon dioxide, which made the earth cool even more so that other forms of life could develop. And so life continued to evolve. And plants and rocks and minerals and all this stuff that is on the earth's surface eventually began to go under the earth's surface and become compressed into soil and oil and coal. Oil, fossil fuels, and coal is, is essentially really, really old dead plant matter, and that's all it is. It is uh, the, the sunlight that plants captured and the carbon dioxide that plants captured, and when the plants died, it kept some of this carbon in them. It went way under the earth, became compressed, and after billions of years, turned into oil and coal. So what we have is basically a whole bunch, a, a shitload of carbon dioxide and dead plants became trapped under the Earth's crust. And when uh, Earth's original continent, known as Pangaea, split into several pieces, a lot of the plant matter that was on Pangaea uh, fell down below the ocean and under the ocean's floor, where it became even more compressed and this turned into oil. So over billions of years, a whole bunch of carbon became trapped in the Earth. This is the carbon that billions of years earlier was out in the atmosphere and made it too hot for life to thrive. And so fast forward way ahead to uh, modern times when we discovered oil and started burning it. What we're essentially doing is using up uh, carbon, the carbon that was trapped in the earth. And we're using a whole lot of oil. In the last hundred years, uh, we've used over 50% of all the oil that is in the earth and uh, coal as well. So what we're doing essentially is taking a substance that is comprised mostly of carbon, which is coal and oil, which took the earth billions of years to make and to compress and re-releasing all of that into the atmosphere in about 50 years. So it took hundreds of millions of years to make it, and it's taking us a few decades to release it all back out into the atmosphere. Remember, it was completely necessary for all that carbon to become trapped in the earth in order that the earth cooled down. If you were to take all that oil and coal and burn it all at once and release it back to the atmosphere, the conditions of the Earth would become just like the early Earth 4.5 billion years ago, hell-like. But that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're, bo we're going to be out of oil in a couple of decades, that's for sure, and we've uh, burnt up a hell of a lot of coal as well. So we're taking all that carbon that was stored in the Earth over billions of years and sending it back out there in a few decades. It's simple, simple science, and simple math, and simple physics. What do you think it's going to do? It's going to do exactly the same thing it did when the early Earth was around. Make it very fucking hot, and that's exactly what it's doing now. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse the more oil we burn. What really pisses me off is when I hear global warming deniers talk about carbon dioxide, and they say... Oh, well, we breathe out carbon dioxide, and plants breathe it in. It's completely necessary. It's not killing the atmosphere. It's not making it hot. We need carbon dioxide. Of course we do. We need a certain amount of it, a balance of it. If there's too much, it becomes too hot. Uh, kind of like, to use an analogy, water. Uh, we want water. We need water. Water is not a bad thing, but too much of it can be. If the entire earth was covered in water, we wouldn't have any place to live. So all, mod I, all forms of life are based upon the uh, delicate atmosphere, which has just the right amount of carbon and oxygen and other gases. If you get too much carbon, it's going to uh, heat up too much. And the earth has done a wonderful job over the past several billion years of regulating itself. Uh, by using plants and animals to do all of that on its own. But we've been interfering and by digging up and burning what it took the Earth billions of years to capture. We're disrupting the process and we will disrupt the balance. 
and our entire civilization and modern ways of living are based upon this delicate balance. If the way agricultures and forests and species start uh, to change drastically, then we can't rely upon them for survival anymore in the ways that we do now. So I hope that made sense. It's really not that difficult to understand. So common sense here when you try to figure out what's going to happen when we re-release all that gas that was trapped into the earth over billions of years. It's going to become really fucking hot, basically. Um, that's all I got to say. Peace.